I'm Cynthia and I did my presentation on women's suffrage and women's rights. So I picked the books um, Century of a Struggle by Eleanor Flexner and Women's, um, women's Suffrage and Women's Rights by Ellen Bois. So a little bit of background on women's suffrage is that um, there was very few organizations that um, were there before the Civil War and the few that were there didn't gain much movement or any traction. Um, and a lot of them just turned into um, charity organizations because they weren't taken seriously enough as a women's rights um, association. But before and during the Civil War, many women joined abolitionist um, organizations. And many people think this is when women learned how to run their own movement and their associations to where they could be taken seriously and gain some traction with their movement. Um, so after the Civil War, the 14th and 15th Amendments were passed, granting African American men um, the right to citizenship and the right to vote. And this kind of told women like, hey, like if African Americans can get their rights that they deserve, we can also get the rights that we deserve. We just have to fight for it a little bit. So in 1890, um, the most well-known association was formed, the National American Women's Suffrage Association. Um, there were obviously many more associations than just this one, but this was the most well-known one and the one that was mainly covered by both of the books. And then in 1920, the 19th Amendment was finally passed, giving women the right to vote. So my first author is Eleanor Flexner. She wrote Century of a Struggle. Um, some background on her is that she was actually only 12 years old when the 19th Amendment was passed. And both of her parents were very big feminists. Um, they both attended the march um, in New York, like the New York parade for women's suffrage in 1915. Um, and she was also very well educated. Um, she went to sophomore college and earned a high honors degree in both history and English. Um, and when, during the start of her career, she actually mainly focused on um, theater. She wrote um, plays for the theater, but she kind of got some interest into um, women's rights and saw that the sub subject was largely untouched. So she decided to change her focus to women's rights. And then the second author was Ellen Du Bois. She wrote Women's Suffrage and Women's Rights. Um, so she was also very highly educated. She has a PhD in history from Northwestern University. Um, and then while she was a graduate student, she joined the Chicago um, Women's Liberation Union. And this is what really got her interest in women's rights and pretty much ended up focusing her whole career on women's history. Uh, women's history, sorry. And according to People's World Magazine, um, she is the earliest pioneer of women's history. Well, one of the earliest. Um, obviously, there was people before her, like Eleanor Flexner. Um, and then in 1998, um, she earned the John Kelly Memorial Prize of the American Historical Association for her book, um, The Harriet Stanton Bletch and, and the Winning of Women's Suffrage. So she was obviously very well known in her um, field of work and she was very well respected. Um, so now to compare both of their books, um, Century of a Struggle, um, it pretty much focused on telling a story. Um, it was very opinion based and it just kind of felt like you were like reading a story more than reading about like facts. Um, and then it also mentions African Americans and um, their role that they played in the movement and also mentions their rights and she had a very big emphasis on African American education and she had a very strong viewpoint that it should not be segregated and everyone deserves the same um, education. And she also had a whole chapter discussing who opposed women's suffrage so she obviously went in very big depth with the subject and she kind of was able to debunk what they were kind of saying using her opinion and what she did know about the um, subject. Well, Du Bois kind of focused more on a political aspect of the movement. Um, and she also only mentions white suffrage 
um, suffragists. And she does not really go into African American rights at all. In fact, she doesn't even af mention African Americans at all. Um, and she also only had a few pages on who um, oppose um, suffrage. Um, she just kind of stated that, oh, it was just men who didn't want like their gender roles to change and still wanted their power over women. However, they also had very many um, similarities too. They mentioned the same um, associations, the National um, Woman Suffrage Association and the American Woman Association. Um, they also had a very large focus on how the movement got started. Um, they obviously mentioned the abolitionist groups that women um, were a part of and how they learned how to make their own movement and pretty much started how they started their own um, associations and how they got um, some traction and how they gained like the respect of others to really um, get the ball rolling with their um, movement. Um, and then it also just talks about women's rights as a whole. Um, while the main focus of both these books were the suffrage, um, they also focused on workers' rights, um, labor unions, divorce, um, education, many things in their books. So the differences um, can be pretty much boiled down to the time period that both of these books were written in and when these women lived and their political views. So the time um, period on which these books were written were a very big factor because Eleanor Flexner, like I said, she was only 12 years old when the 19th Amendment was passed. So when she decided to finally write her book, there really wasn't that much research or much written about the movements. So when she decided to write her book, that's why she ended up pretty much just telling a story and having to use a lot of opinion was because like there wasn't much research that she could have done to include in her book. And plus she was very close to it because her parents were feminists so she kind of also wanted to tell their story as well. Um, while Du Bois, um, she focused on the political aspects and because she wrote it decades later, she was able to do more research um, and figure out things on her own too. So um, this allowed her to focus more on the facts and the political aspects of the movement. And then the political views also made played a big role in the differences of these books. So Flexer was actually known as a left feminist. Um, she was actually part of the Communist Party. Um, so she kind of had the viewpoint of every single person was equal and everyone deserved the exact same rights and the exact same things. So I feel like this is why she was, um, why she mentioned African Americans and their rights. And it's because she felt like they deserved the same exact rights that whites got. Um, and then Du Bois, she's liberal, so she's still on the left side of the spectrum, but obviously nowhere near as extreme as um, Flexner was, but because she is liberal and she focused on the political aspect of the movement, she obviously very strongly favored the liberal viewpoints that people had during this time period. So that's pretty much what she kind of focused her book on was the liberal views and anything that wasn't liberal she opposed. And that would be the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed.